Hey, for those of y'all placing bets, also if you wanna watch the game with me, uh, head over to the Chalk Media YouTube channel and uh, watch with me and my buddies. I got my green light co-host, Macon. I got some other special guests. Uh, and we'll be watching Saturday night, uh, Titans Ravens, YouTube Live. I don't even know how to say it. What is it, YouTube Live, Reed? YouTube Live. Check us out there. Uh, I don't do the technology. I just watch the game and drink beer uh, and place a bunch of bets. So watch with us um, and comment, ask any questions you got. We answer questions the whole game too. So appreciate you guys. Let's go, man. Wildcard weekend is over. Your boy made some money here. NFL on Greenlight Gambling Show, powered by Bet America. I got Stanford Steve with me. My boy, Bet America provides us with all of our lines. Make sure you go to betamerica.com and download the Bet America app. You can check out my game picks, Steve's game picks. You can bet on my long shots, all this stuff. Lots going on at Bet America. Thrilled to be involved with them. We are thrilled to make money, Steve. That's what we do and help other people make money. How have we been doing at that? Uh, I'll pass comment to you. <laughs> Shit. I'm trying. Dude. This damn NFL, I need this league to end. This NFL stuff, it's... We need it's, spring training baseball or something. Can, yeah, we need... Can we bet on the Cactus League? Absolutely. Did they really do it? Yeah. Oh, good. I'm there. All right. I need a new sport to bet on, too, because when, when this season ends, it's like, yo, what do wait we do? You get on, wait till you get going on hockey. Oh, come on. Flames totals? First goal in the first 10 minutes you can bet now? No way. Oh, that's, yeah. that's got to be like pandemonium in the sports book. Or if you're Flyers. watching, Ooh. holding your Bet America app. Um, you so to recap last week, um, I was, yeah. we were both one and one in college. Yeah. College at this point, the last couple games has been like, let's get this over with. No disrespect to any. Who won those games? Um, Louisiana Lafayette won, did not cover, Fuck. and Nevada, it depended on your line, because yeah. it opened at 7 and it went off at 10, so that was a, that was a dicey one. Either way, oh, we... Uh, two yeah. lane, two oh, lane, two lane, lane two lane, so that was the one I got right, you got the other one right. Yep. Then in the pros, I had a nice weekend, and really it was the, it was the Bills sequence with the, I was 3-1, and one, Steve was 1-3, oh. and three. that's, you know, we, the blind squirrel, you know the blind squirrel adage, I got lucky. <laughs> But let's say I had gone four and zero, I wouldn't be acting this humble. And had the Bills not just totally fucked that whole sequence up in plus territory at the end of the game, I mean, I don't even know. Uh, I was praying for everything because I'm like, if I if I don't win this game, I needed to get off to a good start, and I needed everything to go what happened in order to get a win. Uh, obviously, I had Houston giving two and a half. You had Buffalo going the other way. But man, oh man, I. I wanted to be a, wall, a fly on the wall in that referee meeting after that game. Man, like, they what, screwed a lot of stuff up. On? Holy moly. Like, this is the playoffs. And for me, I don't know what you thought about the blindside block. That was the one for me as a better on Buffalo. I get it. That could go either way. But that was ticky-tack. And that knocked them out of the, you know, they were, they were on the fringe. I mean, this was, you know, 40-yard line. Uh, you know, and just inside, they had a chance to, to pick up a few more yards and kick a field goal at least. And then they had Watson dead to rights. They had third and 18. They let Duke Johnson catch a ball and go for about 20. I mean, the Bills, it was like they were trying to lose. The lateral, the whole yeah. thing. I feel well, terrible for Bills fans. It was like the, t the, the game was drunk. Not enough tables. Not enough tables. Not enough tables. But I, I, I do want to take this opportunity. I, I did get the, uh, I did, I did get the, uh, the Titans right. And I gave yeah. out I gave out money line for some people, and I actually won some bucks on the money line. So now we have a whole new slate. It's a new day, um, and we'll go back and forth again. Of course, starting with one of those uh, picks, thanks to the New England loss, I actually think Tennessee is going to play Baltimore pretty close. So give me Tennessee at Ooh. Baltimore. Yeah, here's why. I think 
Baltimore is going to score no matter what. The whole thing is going to be keeping up with them, and I actually think the Titans can keep up with them. What does Baltimore do more than anybody in the league defensively? They blitz. And what does Tannehill, Mm -hmm. what has Tannehill done most of the year? It was a different season. It's the playoffs. He has handled the blitz well. Also, another thing you got to watch for there is Derrick Henry getting out in space. If they're smart, they'll make those guys tackle. Those guys in the second level in Baltimore, they don't like to tackle. Get on the edge. And some of the edge guys, you want to make them set the edge. They're, They're more these backer types that are the size of the running back they're trying to set the edge on. I actually like Tennessee to move the ball. And they haven't seen anybody like A.J. Brown lately, the tear he's been on, 45-yard plays for an entire month straight. You know, I give me Tennessee to cover. I, I, I agree. Yeah. I, can we, we do agree. this? Is Reed allowing us to agree? Yeah, we can agree. So I can... love it when we agree. Okay. All right. I'm, All right. Well, I was I'm on it a, then. A circumstance we couldn't agree, so I was just looking for angles to go <laughs> against you last week. Um this week is is the weekend. I, I mentioned it last week, Chris, but like this weekend is there's 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 a blowout. Yeah, you find the blowout, and now everybody's pointing their fingers towards Kansas City and Houston. Mm-hmm. I don't like that one at all. Now that everybody, the next one is oh, Baltimore's home Saturday night. Weather's supposed to be good. Lamar's going to go crazy. Uh, you know, he's extra motivated after what he did in the playoffs last year and how he was below average against the Chargers. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with it. I like the way Tennessee is coming in this week. They showed me a lot last week with you know playing basically scoreless in the second half yeah. and just camping down as 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 the Patriots were playing you know last gasp of offense yeah. where Brady's always been his best. So Tennessee defensively, re- I know you know this is this is totally different offenses, but Tennessee showed me a lot defensively. Oh yeah, in that circumstance, in that in that in that game of where they went, what they were up against. What, and what they knew they were up against, you know, that, that, that's what was more impressive to me is, you know, everybody you know, was talking to them up and like, Hey, they could do this. They could do this, but to actually go in and do it yeah. was pretty darn impressive. Yeah. And so, they made, they made big plays to your point. Like I think in a lot of the same thing, Hey, the Ravens are going to move the ball, but can you yes. make big plays in the red zone, the low red, et cetera. And you saw that goal line stand they had, that's their, Oops. that's their season. And, and the, the 54 made two game saving plays and they're going to need to step up and make plays like that. So we, yeah. that's so good I, news. So like people are pointing to this game as being the second choice as a blow up. I don't see it. I think Tennessee has the goods to hang around. Uh, we talked about Tannehill last week and how good the, the team has been in the red zone. You mentioned how Baltimore doesn't like to tackle on the back end. Yep. I mean, Tennessee is, I mean, there's not a lot of guys that wear sleeves on that team, and, mm-hmm. and, and I like it because it's a reflection <laughs> of Mike Vrabel. I can't yeah. wear, I could never wear sleeves. So, uh, well, you play, I, you played in Palo there. Alto. It was just, it was, uh, it was misty yeah, out there. You had to go there. up to the rain. You, you had know, to go up yeah. to the rain. Seattle is Pol- <laughs> Pullman. It got dark at I one bet, o'clock. Actually, I, bet, I, I buy Pullman, actually. So, Ooh. you, I, it sounds like you have a blowout in mind then. You want to lead with your blowout? No, I'm going to just go back to this. I'll take Tennessee in the points here. Okay, cool, I, cool. I, I think oh, they hang around. Okay, I great. I lean over, too. Great, you lean over. Yeah, I think that's safe. Um, okay, I'll go, uh, and I'm not doing this in order of confidence, but I actually like Seattle maybe to win outright, but I definitely like them to cover. I gave them out as my long shot. If You, you could flip the line and make them four-point favorites, and I actually like them. I think they're going to get after Green Bay up front. You, you know there's a couple teams in the league, two of them are playing this weekend, who I absolutely just don't trust in Green Bay and Houston. And I definitely like this matchup for Seattle. Seattle, I think, even being down at the running back position, is going to get after uh, Green Bay up front. I think that Russ is going to hurt them on a shot or two. The big question for me is, does Seattle turn the ball over? They've, had that, they've been prone to, to implosion this year. Uh, in some big games, they don't turn it over on the road. I actually think they can they can keep the ball away from Aaron enough and actually create some turnovers of their own uh, and win this thing. I, I all the pressure is on Green Bay. Obviously, yeah. they're at home. Uh, I did a podcast earlier this week. I call them the worst two seed ever Ooh. in the history of the NFL. Heavy uh, accusations. I, just, I I I just I I'm not a believer. Um, but I do kind of like the way they match up with Seattle. Yeah. Uh, the issue is if Seattle can run the ball with Homer and Lynch. If they could do that and keep Rodgers steaming over there on the, on the sideline, that'll be that'll be that'll be the best recipe for them. But I don't see the the home team pulling away here either. So I like Seattle also with the. Here points. we go. I can't, I, I can't go against Russell Wilson, man. I can't do it. 
No, it's hard at this point. I mean, you'd think the the guy that a lot of people thought was like a robot quarterback made in the lab. I mean, you're betting on the other guy. I mean, that's how good Russell Wilson's been through the first eight years of his career. And uh, he hasn't slowed down a bit. In fact, this is his team now. And, um, and I think if they're smart, they mix in enough shots. They don't get too complacent just trying to pound the rock. Um, and, and that's going to be the key to the game for me. Now, my third pick... What do you got? I do like all prop bets over on Lockett. The Packers, if they put King, if they have to put King on Lockett, because I imagine they're going to put Jair on Metcalf. Yeah. King not hang with Lockett. Lockett's going to have a field day. I like Go that, ahead. actually. This is, free, this is free bets for you out there. Um, okay. My third game uh, will go to the Bay. I like uh, the Vikings to cover. I know th- this might be your blowout, eh? No. You like not. the Vikings too? Let's go. Ball. I don't have the blow. This is awful. Okay. Okay. Go well, ahead. I like the Vikings. Um, I like the Vikings because it seems to me, and I'm not big into the motivation thing, but when you have a group of guys like the Vikings D-line, which I think is better than the, than the Niners D-line, um, strictly, yeah, wow. I, I do. Uh, Whoa. Hot they, t- can we put, like, you got to get that clip out now before the podcast is released. So get read on that. Now, Listen, I think they're. Up, making I think making's off against. Tonight? Yeah, they're. Yeah, Mush making is somewhere else. So we uh, have. So we have. We've got Griffin. Uh, we've got Hunter. We've got Joseph. We've got guys who last week I watched and Bar when he rushes and ad rushes. I know he's not a D lineman, but those guys were wreaking havoc on the best O line in football, and I put that in quotes because I'm not sure about that, but. The Niners' D-line, as we've said, and I really like them, they've slowed down a bit as the year's gone on. And I think when you talk about getting a room full of guys together, all they've heard about is the San Francisco D-line. They're going to go up there and try to wreck the game. I don't know if they can do it. Now, one thing to watch is going to be the Vikings covering Kittle, obviously. The Vikings have done this relatively well this year. They've been towards the top of the league in, 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 in shutting tight ends down. Now, Kittle's a different animal completely. So what do you do? <laughs> You make them drive the field. The longer San Francisco has the ball matriculating down the field, the the greater chance he's going to make a mistake in this big playoff stage. And that's what I do. I, I limit the big plays. I put it on the D-line to get after Jimmy G when they're throwing the ball. And I feel pretty decent about my chances. I think they're going to score on San Francisco. Okay. I, I actually looked at this over, too. I, I believe I, – I like both teams to score yeah. in this game. As much as I like – the defensive lines, because I still lean to San Francisco with the talent they have with those guys. The issue to me is Minnesota's offensive line. I thought they played out of their minds really well in a really rough spot in New Orleans last week. They really, really impressed me after a kind of roller, and not a roller coaster, but just a, you know, up and down, like you want consistency out of your yeah. own line. And that, you know, and everybody, you know, you, talk, you guys talked about Kirk Cousin earlier in the week, and that's, I mean, Hey, you root for him or not, man, but you root for the guy to be get protection. Yes, and, and give him a fair to, shot. To do what he's supposed to do. Yeah, and and, 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 he, and he performed. Uh, and that's a great thing. job yeah. in Minnesota, too. Uh, Lattimore goes out with the injury, and the and Minnesota goes right at the new DB, mm-hmm. and that, that's the game one in play right there. Yep. Um, I, this game is, is going to be awesome because I, I absolutely think the world of Shanahan, I think he's incredible as a play caller. And that's the one thing that scares me is having a game because it looks like um, the corner from UCF Hughes he's mm-hmm. out. Yeah. Uh, and and, um, who got, and we got to keep an eye. We got to keep an eye on Thielen. Um, Thielen had an ankle injury this week, but you know I didn't. He didn't look bad on that forty-three yard bomb Ooh, at the end of overtime. Um, smooth, man. So I I I I don't know if he dinged it this week. I, I didn't get the details on that, but I think he'll play, man. An ankle. Um, yeah. Golly, it's the uh, division round. But the, I, I mentioned that, and then on the other side it was Xavier Rhodes. Kept looked like he had a bad stinger uh, all game last week. So I just Shanahan's so good with matchups. But I'm getting a full touchdown with a team that I think needed to play last week in this in this road, and that's Minnesota. Yeah. They got so you saw how much momentum you saw the locker yeah. room afterwards. Like you can ride that stuff. People are going to talk about the travel they have to do. That They're stuff not feeling matter. anything. You're running all on the, adrenaline all right the, now. Yeah. So I, I'll take the full touchdown with seven points with Minnesota too. Okay, cool. So that leaves one game left uh, that we haven't done. Kansas City is going to blow the Texans out. Whoa. That, I'm just, right. I, so is this where we disagree? Yes. Okay. So the last time they played, great. 
um, whatever. Two totally different teams. Totally right. different teams. And the two teams I mentioned all year that haven't trusted, Houston and, uh, and, and Green Bay, that are of relatively high profile. Houston is lucky to be in this spot. They really should have got beat at home by the Bills. I mean, the Bills were on their ass the first quarter, they, in the second quarter too, they looked like a team that had had a bye week. Um, they're going to go on the road to Arrowhead, the toughest place to play in the postseason along with Seattle and New Orleans, and expect to start that slow. It's, it's going to get ugly. It's going to get ugly fast. I felt, I felt like last week, Deshaun, who was awesome, especially towards the end, in the first half, his eyes were down a lot. Um, eyes were down. He tuck it and run. I don't know if, what's the deal with Fuller. Is Fuller clear? He's playing. Yeah, yeah. which is going to make a huge difference. But I'm just saying I still like Kansas City with that home field advantage against a team that I don't think is that well coached and doesn't seem to be a consistent self-starting team. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I just obviously Kansas City's good is way better than Houston's good. Yeah. So and that's that's reflected obviously in the ten points here. But I just feel I. I Deshaun's playmaking ability. I talked about it last week. That's why I like them better in that spot. I expected Buffalo to come out, uh, you know, and put their stamp on that game with the defense last week. So I'm going to take the 10 here. Uh, I just, I just feel like they could keep it close enough. Yeah. You know, they I, could back. I, I think a backdoor cover is very possible. Yeah. It's, it's, I mean, you got Deshaun, you got all his receivers and I think Houston's got to come out and really try and run the football against, against Kansas city. And I think they could. And obviously Houston has to play with a lead in this game. So this might be a live bet action. If you see Kansas City go up 3 nothing, 7 nothing, maybe you do jump on that and because this could be a long day. I don't see Houston be able to protect uh, Deshaun on a consistent basis yeah. in Arrowhead, as you mentioned, you know, knowing that they have to score and knowing that they're going to have to throw the ball. That could flip it around. Yeah, it's like, so do you, do you want to bet on somebody making throws like the one he had to make to win the game? last week you you don't want to bet on that happening I mean like we played them in Philly last year and yeah they started slow we got up like 14 17 points they damn near came back and beat us because of his heroics but do you really want to have to rely on that that's why I think a backdoor couple cover is actually quite possible I think it could get get out to be 14 17 21 points I don't, I don't know I don't know how Houston that's the thing with Houston I don't know how they're going to play but I yeah. think they're always in it at least for the cover for your sake um so there's always that. So recapping, I have every underdog. Yes, you do. Yes. And I have one favorite. That's Correct. the difference. So uh, we, we, we agreed on, uh, on both NFC dogs, road dogs, uh, in yep. Seattle and uh, in Minnesota. Underdogs. And then in the AFC, we disagree on one game. You like the Texans getting a bunch of points. I like the Chiefs. And then mm -hmm. we both like the Titans to keep it close. So uh, here's one other thing. Yeah, something I just feel like I like both uh, dogs in the AFC too because all I've wanted all year, the game I have wanted is Mahomes in Baltimore against Lamar, and we're this close, and something's gonna fuck it up for me. I just, I just, I yeah, just it's know too it. perfect. Yeah, it did. It, it, like that is that's the Super Bowl to me. Here's the here's the big what if. What if we have and and. Blue blood wise, right now you've got Mahomes and uh, and and Watson playing each other, so we're guaranteed one quarterback blue blood. But imagine if our final four is it involves Tannehill, Cousins. Well, we get we get two. We'd get Wilson. So you could have Tannehill and Cousins. What if Tannehill and Cousins are your Super Bowl matchup? I mean, like, what the <laughs> fuck happened this year in pro football? It could ha it it absolutely could happen. I, I do like Tennessee to keep it close. I don't think they win, uh, but stranger things have happened for sure. So cool new game for the playoffs from Bet America. It's called the NFL Playoff $10,000 Challenge. You correctly pick the spread, uh, the over-under, a prop bet for all these games this weekend. You can win ten grand. i have made my picks already, so you can copy them. I would advise you to. I don't want to jinx myself, but last weekend was good, which means hey now. Hey now. Hey now. Uh, or you can pick your own and keep your pride. Either way, head over to Bet America and play their NFL playoffs $10,000 challenge. Let's get after it and always gamble responsibly. Steve, you know, I got to gloat because I started 2020 really poorly. Um, so I'm not going to act like I've been there. My first six, seven bets of the new year were, were abysmal. 
Okay. So, um, I, I mean, if it wasn't for this show, I don't know what I would do because I, hopefully people are watching and just fading my NFL picks because <laughs> it's just, I texted Reed, like, is this season ever going to end? Uh, but we're going all with all the underdogs. We're going all the uh, way. I, like, I like Clemson in the title game too. Oh yeah. Uh, that, yeah. Um, here's the deal. I was at the Fiesta bowl and Walking around there, halftime, third quarter, you know, this is going to be a great matchup, Ohio State against LSU. I think the matchup is great. I think Ohio State matches up better with LSU because they play better defense. I totally disagreed with every single person, so I went and watched the second half by myself. Therefore, Clemson comes back. Clemson, in order to beat LSU, you are not going to stop them. You have to have the ability score. to score with them. You have to have it, and Clemson has it, and I'm going to get crushed for saying it, but if you're going to give me both quarterbacks in this game, in this situation, I'm taking 16 for Clemson. I, I just love what Boo! he does. Sorry. You're canceled. Uh, I love receivers. I, I, I trust his, his running backs and, and the receivers more. And I think Clemson can score with them. Uh, I think LSU wins the game like 38-34. But it's going to be an all-time classic. I'm ex as excited for this game as I was back in the day with Reggie Bush against Vince Young. I think it's going to be that good. The star power on offense is incredible. Uh, but I'll take the points in this game. I, I just feel like Clemson has the goods to hang around. It's going to be awesome, and we're going to be there. Bingo. Ha hanging out, baby. Yeah, I got to ah. make – so I got some stuff I got to do down there in uh, New Orleans. I got some money to make and uh, see my buddies, and it should be a oh. lot of fun. Now, I agree with you. I Like, for me, my picks go in this order, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tease – tease God here. You know, I don't, I don't give out my teases a lot here because they're really – they're really big time and important, and and I have a prolific teasing record. Well, when, you out, when you give out a teaser, is it still a tease? I don't know. That's some. Dude, that's that, that's that's a deep question there. You just hit me with. I I, I would tease. Uh, I would take Clemson and uh, and get about thirteen or whatever it would be, yep. and then I would tease the over down. But if I had to give out a uh, an actual pick, it's the over all day. They're gonna score. They're gonna score. They're gonna score. And like you said. It's really not about with LSU trying to stop them. You got to keep up, and Clemson has yeah. what it takes to keep up. I worry. I worry more about their defense. I know at the end of the year we talked about oh the stats were better, this that and the third. Um, but early in that game against Ohio State, they were lucky. Uh, Dobbins went out for a little bit. I mean, they, mm -hmm. they, that looked for a second like it was gonna gonna get ugly. Um, but yeah. I do think they can score uh, with LSU. So give me the over. All right, I love it. And we we can uh -huh. we can watch it in person. Absolutely. Watch it all unfold. We uh, watch Packers Seahawks together. Oh man, this is gonna be such a a good forty eight hours. Um, I, <laughs> I don't. My wife is a saint that she's let me go down and hang out with you guys and make a little money down in the Big Easy. Uh, let's talk about my long shots because this trip was a long shot. Me getting to go to New Orleans. Uh, Winner. So this is a great dynamite lead in. <laughs> My long shots this week, uh, my, my long shot single is, as I mentioned, flipping Seattle. Flip that line. Take them at around minus four. They're going to win. They're going to win. They're going to cover the, my fake-ass line. And then long shot player prop. I like beast mode for one touchdown and over 50 yards. It's just, it's, it's, dude, his preseason is almost over. My man okay. is going to be running angry against the soft front. Um, and I don't mean that like like, you know, individuals are soft it just looks like the scheme and in general they're not as interested in playing the run there um so you can find my long shots by heading over to the super odd section of bet america those lines all of our lines powered by bet america sponsor of this program head over to betamerica.com download the app and let's get paid and let's watch some good football in the big easy my man absolutely bro it's my favorite place for an event i can't wait to get there uh, I'm not sleeping tonight. I'll be doing the show and then going to the airport for a 5 a.m. flight, and I'll be there. You're not going to take a nap, are you, when you when you touch down? you got to get your nap. I'll nap on the plane. Are you serious? You're not going to sleep tonight. You're going to get on a 5 a.m. flight, and then you're going to like just be in New Orleans. Like, no. Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you? Anyways, anyways, get some sleep before I get down there on Sunday night, okay? I will do that. Okay, good, sure. good, good. Okay, buddy. Right. See you there. All right.